Hi, my name is Rebecca Brown. I'm a certified asthma educator and registered respiratory therapist. And today we're going to talk about the use of pulse oximetry in assessing asthma. A pulse oximeter can be useful in determining the severity of an asthma episode, but because it is a trailing indicator, meaning it shows decline later than other signs and symptoms appear, it should not be the only tool used to determine whether an asthma episode is happening or not. A normal oxygen saturation does not mean that an asthma episode is not present. For example, in a mild episode, symptoms like breathlessness while walking or end of breath wheezes, which may only be audible with a stethoscope, can all be happening while an oxygen saturation is normal or above 95%. And a student experiencing a mild episode still needs treatment relying only on the pulse oximeter to assess the presence of an asthma episode could mean they don't get it when they need it. Um, in a moderate asthma episode, symptoms are worse and more obvious, but the O2 sat is still between 90 and 95%. So again, it's not the best indicator. Symptoms, um, some symptoms indicating a moderate asthma episode include breathlessness at rest, a student may be too short of breath to lie down, loud wheezing, appearing frightened or agitated, only being able to speak in short phrases. One situation a pulse oximeter can be helpful is if a child is experiencing a severe asthma exacerbation. If the oxygen saturation is below 90%, you know it is time to enact emergency protocols. Since the tool is quick and non-invasive, it can be helpful in recognizing a severe situation quickly, prompting a quick res response with a 911 call. Additional signs of severe um, asthma episodes include gasping for air, only being able to speak in short phrases or single words, um, using accessory muscles um, while breathing, 